Okay, welcome to the second video on events in progress. This is uh, uh, the, the second part video follows on the first one. Um, so I suggest you watch the first one before you continue with this one. Um, this is basically to do with measuring of any event that has a start and end date. Example is an order. An order has an order date and a delivery date. The amount of time passed from the order date to delivery date, that's the time the order is open. Once it's delivered, the, the order is completed. So the reason why I'm showing this video in addition to the first one is you might have noticed with the first pattern that things um, with the first, uh, the first video that it's actually quite slow. So just imagine it getting bigger and bigger. That would be a problem. So I'm going to introduce you to the snapshot, um, uh, the snapshot method of um, dealing with the events in progress. So I'm going to take your I'm going to quickly show you an example. So you can basically see we have an order table with three orders. And these are the order dates, those are the delivery dates. What we're going to do in the snapshot table essentially is we're going to create um, a row for each each one of the orders. We're going to create a row of data for each day that the order is open. So one, two, three, four is open on the 1st of December to the 3rd of December. The 4th of December is excluded because that is the day where it's actually delivered. So this order is open for three days. Four, five, six, seven. Uh, is open for five days. So there's five rows for this one um, in the open order table versus only one. So that's basically the, the, the five days that have passed between order date and delivery date. And then for 7886, you can see it's open for two days. That's We're going to start off with that and we're going to base all our measures of that. So that's quite quite interesting because we will, that's going to lead, this is going to help us um, simplify all our measures um, by introducing us to this table. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to start by revising the current model, um, data models. We can see we have orders, in fact, orders, that, that's where all your orders are. Orders has products, dim uh, product dimension, customer dimension, and connection to the dates. The dates are connected via the order date, that's an active relationship, and inactive relationship for delivery date. What we're going to do now is we're going to now create the open order table in DAX. So what I'll do is I'll quickly grab some of the code. You know, I'm going to step you through it. We're going to use the generate function. Um, I'm going to drop a link to the generate function here as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to, the generate function um, takes two arguments. It takes a table. We take the fact order table. And then we join it. We do a cross join to dates where we have the order date. So a list of order dates. Um, so order dates so per order, where the order date starts and where the delivery date um, ends, less one. So this will give us a list. It's so going to do a cross join between the dates and the fact orders. And it's basically we're going to add columns for the product key, customer key, uh, order ID, order line ID, and the dates. What this is going to do is it's going to create a table. I'm just quickly going to show you this. Let's quickly. Select one of the orders here. So basically what it did is it created for this order, it created not only one order, but basically we have for each and every day, you can see because there are three order line IDs in here. So my, my grain is order line. So for each order data, that order is open. It's going to create a row. So instead of three rows, it actually has 36 rows. Okay, so that's what we have. That's what we start off. Second thing we do, now that that table exists, the open order tables exists. Okay, we're going to drag it over there. And now we're going to establish the relationship. We're going to say date to date. Got a date relationship. Second thing that we're going to do is we're going to say it's got a customer relation. Customer ID is equal to customer key. Third wing thing we do, you're going to connect it to the product. We can say product key connects to the product ID. So basically, we have an open order table with multiple rows for each order in this table. We don't link these two tables together. We're going to get to treat as a little bit later on. So now that we have the open order table um, created, we can actually now easily create. I'm going to show you how simple it is to write the measures now based on that open order table. So we're going to first start with 
um, open order, all the open uh, uh, orders, I'm just going to call it SS for snapshots. Let's quickly paste in there. So what we're saying here is calculate the distinct count of the open orders. So for the, from the open orders table, we're going to do distinct count of the order IDs. Cool. That's going to give us all our open orders. Let's drag that in to there. This refers to video one, what open order actually means. Now, we're going to create another table we're going to use later on. This is like a hidden one, so let's say new measure. This is the row, row open orders SS, which I refer to SS stands for snapshot. On this one, we just do a distinct count of the open order table of all the order IDs. Cool. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create an end of period open orders measure, which will give us the open orders at the end of each period. That's actually quite simple. As in video one, you'll see what all we do is we refer to the open orders. So we're saying calculate, refer to the open order um, snapshot we created now. Um, just then add the expression to look at the very last date. So it'll give us the end of period open order. So let's just quickly drag that in. These are the open orders at the end of each day or the end of each month. And then la lastly, we're going to add the average open orders. Quite cool. Let's quickly add that. Very simple. You're basically saying do the average X, which is a, a, a row context um, expression. And we're going to basically do the average across the dates for the row open orders snapshot. Cool. And we can just drag that in. And that gives us our average. Let's bring drag the average in there. So now we have the averages. Okay. So now what we're going to do is next up. We're going to look at the actual order sales amounts. Okay, next up, we're going to look at the snapshot sales amount. So we start off here, um, the total sales for each period, the total sales delivered for each period. We've basically dealt with those measures in video one, referred to video one. What we're going to do now is we're going to create the open amount of all the orders based on the snapshot. First thing, we're going to introduce a new function, a new DAX function, which I'm going to um, explain to you a little bit more in detail. Let's quickly paste it in here. Okay, cool. So we basically start off with, we declare a variable. What are the open orders? So we say refer to the open orders table, to the order ID, and do a distinct count. So we know what the distinct orders are. Second one. Okay, so this is the important one. What we're going to do here is, we require to filter all of the op all of the orders, the order table, by using the open orders. As you will recall from the data model, there's no relationship, new, no actual relationship between the open orders and the fact orders. We didn't create that relationship. This treat as function, okay? This treat as function creates a virtual relationship that allows us to filter the the open or the fact orders so the orders with the open orders so this allows for filtering that's what the purposes of that treat is, treat as is i'm going to leave some notes uh in the links um around how you can use treat as but this is a this is a virtual relationship that doesn't exist in the model we're creating virtually now that we have that we're basically going to say calculate the total sales yes based on the filter, which is this filter we've created here, by using treat as to select all the, uh, from the orders, all the open orders, yes, and then we remove all the other filters for fact orders on that table. So return for us the total amount of open order sales. Okay, so I'm going to drag that in there. Okay, so now we know what the open order sales amounts are at the end of each period. But what I'm gonna, what's more important this is the the end of period open amount. So this is the real measure. But for this measure, we actually need the one, the open amount one we created now. So what we're gonna do is 
quite simple. We're just saying calculate we're using the open amount all SS, which is a snapshot, which we just created now, and just basically evaluate it in terms of the last date, so the end of period date. So that's going to show us the value of the open orders at the end of each day, month, or year, whatever the filter context is. That in there. That is the useful value here. That's the, the end of period um, open order amount. Okay, cool. And then lastly, we're just going to do the average, which brings us to the end of this video. And I'm going to drop a link to the report on my Power BI service. Uh, so yeah, we're just going to do an average X um, across all dates for the open amount or SS. Cool. That's going to give us an idea of the average open um, order amounts. And there you have it. Isn't that cool? Excellent. I'm going to drop links to all of the DAX functions, my site, and also the report published on Power BI service.